The announcement yesterday by the Prime Minister, and, and as we say, it's in context here, he talked about some transit funding for some uh, projects in the uh, the GTA and mentioned the Hamilton project. And, uh, well, short on details, of course, Hamilton, Fred Eisenberger says he doesn't have all the details yet either, but he likes what he's heard so far. Clearly, this has been quite a journey. Uh, you know, I've been advocating for this uh, LRT now for the better part of 12 years. And we've had it uh, on again, off again. I'm actually looking at a poster in my office now which says Hamilton LRT is a go. That's going back to 2015. Uh, but is it over the finish line yet? Uh, I'm not so sure about that. John Best has been following the story from day one as well. John, of course, is the publisher of the Bay Observer. Uh, John, great to have you back in the program. Thanks for yeah, the time great today. Yeah, to be with you, Bill. Good morning. Uh, were you surprised by the announcement? It, it kind of came out of the blue for a lot of us. Um, no, I, I, I really wasn't because we, we had known uh, since the beginning of the year that uh, there was just furious lobbying going on. We, you know, we read about the Lyuna involvement. Uh, they, mm -hmm. they announced a couple of months ago that, that they thought a deal was imminent. Uh, I'd certainly heard nothing out of Ottawa uh, that would suggest they had soured on the project. Uh, Jane McKenna kept talking about uh, how it was a shovel-ready project. I mean, my view is the only shovel-ready project in Hamilton are the flower beds in the traffic islands because this project's got to go through an RFQ process. It's got to go through an RFP. Might even need some more design work. So it's not going to. There, there will be no shovel in the ground before either the federal or the provincial elections. So and, and let's yeah we're being pragmatic about this and, and and I'll go one step further on this and you know I'm I'm trying to parse the words that the prime minister said yesterday and you know did he actually say LRT he talked about rapid transit etc. Uh, which I in some people's minds is going to leave that open to interpretation John. Well, yeah I mean but I think that'd be a bit of wishful thinking Bill because we don't need 3.4 billion to do uh, BRT. No. Uh, for the billion dollars that, that was on the table uh, from the provincial government, that was enough money to do a, a thorough uh, bus rapid transit that would, uh, you know, replicate the B line, but would also give us a north-south um, bus rapid transit and uh, probably uh, get us started on electrifying uh, some of our bus system. So if it's not LRT, we don't need $3.4 billion. So details to come, as I said, the official announcement we're told is going to be tomorrow, uh, yep. which I assume in, in typical political fashion, John, all the bells and whistles, I'm sure that uh, Carolyn Mulroney, the, the provincial transit minister or transport minister is going to be there, uh, the federal minister, of course, Minister McKenna that you talked about, uh, and others uh, to make an announcement like this. Uh, I'll ask you the same question I asked Richard Brennan a couple of minutes ago. Uh, because of the, uh, the history here, shall we say, of, of the way that city council has dealt with this, uh, is there going to be a time sensitivity to this announcement like there was with the money for, uh, for infrastructure that the feds announced a few months ago? Well, uh, yes, because, um, you know, Jane McKenna has, uh, and, and others, uh, keep talking about shovel ready. And, you know, my, my question is, uh, you know, have, is, is there any transit or uh, imperative here, or is it simply the, the goal now is to get money out the door as quickly as possible? I mean, we know we have two elections coming up, one certainly this year, and then we got two elections next year. So it, it seems the goal now is just to push money out the door without a whole lot of regard for whether it's, the, you know, transit metrics, all of that, that's gone out the door. Uh, connecting with GO, that's that's gone. Uh, so it's simply, at the end of the day, it's about building a train, which is uh, kind of what it's been really right from the beginning. From those early discussions, and, and I, I, it's gone through so many different machinations right now. We, here we are, amazingly, right back at square one again, talking about this McMaster to, to Eastgate Square situation uh, and the discussion about the impact it's going to have on the downtown, etc. cetera. Uh, I'll ask, uh, let, let's talk about the operating costs, because, again, it, we're short on details here. But, you know, there are a number of people on city council that begrudgingly voted for the money the last time, uh, but it was on the condition that there's no taxpayer money is going to be used in this, which I think is kind of silly, actually, because this is, this is taxpayer money we're getting from the feds in the province, too. But they didn't want this to impact the, the, the tax base here in the city of Hamilton. Uh, if the city says, if the province and the feds say, look, it, you, you guys are on the hook for operating costs, uh, it, does that give the people that want to vote against this a way out? Well, it gives them a way out. Uh, whether they want to take it or not is another question. I, I mean, the way I look at it 
is council is in exactly the same position they were in in 2017 when they had the last big vote. They're being offered uh, an LRT system at no capital cost to the city, but with an unknown operating and maintenance cost. Uh, the, nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is the price of building the LRT. Uh, so it, 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 like, it's not like we're, we're going to get extra value now because it's a $3.4 million billion dollar LRT as opposed to the $1 billion that we obviously mistakenly thought it was going to be. So nothing has changed, it, it, but once again we have a situation, we have a council that's having stuff happening around them, and they need to get a hold of this project if they're really serious about operating and maintenance. Uh, they, they need to, um, we know there has been a request for a meeting with Metrolinx in the ministry. Um, I think council needs to set up a steering committee uh, that uh, that has uh, you know broad representation from council. Uh, maybe it's a, a committee of the whole council. I don't know, but they need to get answers because uh, are, are we going to get to the point where we're doing a ribbon cutting and we still don't know what the operating and maintenance costs are? The uh, the, the last number I saw was in when the. Uh, when the province canceled the project, they also released some cost figures, mm -hmm. and uh, they were suggesting at that point that the city share would be 930, 950 million over 30 years, which is over 30 million a year. Uh, so that's that's for the LRT, and then of course we're already paying over 30 million a year to subsidize the HSR. So I mean, council needs to take action in terms of informing itself. And I'm now hearing discussion, and uh, you probably saw it as well. They're talking about a referendum. Uh, that would be uh, that would be interesting. Uh, it, it would, I think, uh, at least provide a little bit of sober second thought on the issue. I mean, the one thing, Bill, that is not going to happen is this project is there's not going to be a shovel in the ground for a year, a year and a half, two years. So, so the actual any construction that might take place is not going to happen until after all these elections are out of the way. Well, let me and ask you that we'll point. We'll have to see where that yeah. goes. Because yeah, the, the feedback and the reaction that I heard from some people yesterday, they seem to think that next year we're going to start building this thing. Uh, you've been studying this from day one, and, uh, the study, and you've been studying the studies that have been done on this too. Uh, is, there, is there more work to be done here? I mean, you, you talked about you know, trying to get a firm figure on operating costs. That's going to be key. Uh, you know, the cost of this project has gone up because it's been so long and in, in been kicked down the road. I mean, you know, we already talked about the cost of building a deck has gone almost tripled in the last six months, and the, the cost of building an LRT, I would think, has got substantially as well. Uh, sure. Even the estimate that the province gave, John, when they canceled the contract, they figured that this Hamilton project was going to cost over $5 million. Billion. Now, the, you know, that's not what we're getting in a situation like this. I mean, is this an underestimate? Is there still going to be money that's going to have to be dumped into this at some point in the future? Well, even, even we don't want to get too numbery here, but even even when they said it was $5 billion, uh, they said the construction cost was more in the area of $3, $3 billion or $3.5 billion. The rest of it was interest, uh, yeah. long-term replacement costs, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I think you can build it uh, for $3.4 billion, but, but you're right about the, the process here. Um, when, when the project was canceled, the consortia that were, that were bidding on the project, they all disbanded, they've all moved on, and uh, they're all working on other projects. So... You know, there's you don't just snap your fingers uh, on something like this. There has to be a request for uh, qual uh, for qualifications first of all, an RFQ, and that's when you start uh, shortlisting groups that you think are capable of, of producing the project. Then you put out the request for proposals, and and that's where the bids come in, and then you've got to go through an evaluation of that. It's just impossible for this thing to uh, have any construction started before uh, 2023. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot that can happen in the meantime. The most important thing, I think, right now is, is for council to get control of its own destiny. There's too much stuff happening around them. If, if as we suspect, there's a large number of councillors, perhaps even a majority, that, that don't go along with this project, They've, they've now got to take this in their hands. Uh, they can't have this kind of shadowy stuff going on, uh, people meeting, third parties coming in and, 
and trying to steer the process. Um, it, it's really, council is exactly where it was in 2017. They, they do have, the one thing that can happen is the RFP can't be finalized without council's agreement. That's right. So they still have a lot of, they got the reins in their hands to some degree if they if they recognize it as such. And, um, you know, at, at the very minimum, I think the public has a right to know exactly what the operating and maintenance costs are going to be. And that, that's got to be known publicly uh, before we, we go forward. And then if, well, there if, is if, a, if a the number you just... Well, uh, you know, that, that would be... Yeah, again, you, there's no point having a referendum if you can't present the information to the public. Which is going to have to be forthcoming, I get that. But, I mean, you know, Catherine McKenna, who's the minister, of course, in charge of this. Now, she, we know she she has roots in the Hamilton area, of course, uh, but she's actually representing in Ottawa. But she's been pretty consistent about this, too, about light rail. Uh, obviously, because of her time in the Environment Ministry, I guess she sees the benefit there. Uh, Carolyn Maroney, of course, the minister provincially, uh, seems to be on side with this as well. So that support is there. But what I'm puzzled by is why the renewed interest all of a sudden from the Ford government in this. I mean, as you recall, two years ago, they said, forget it, we're not paying a nickel for this. And and the, I don't know if he's, he's uh, had on the road to Damascus, he's had this awakening or something, but all of a sudden, Doug Ford seems to be a strong advocate for this. Well, I, I think it was a result of uh, just relentless lobbying by Layuna and, and, and others. Uh, I, I just think, uh, you know, once the project was canceled, uh, the LRT proponents got busy, and, uh, um, you know, I've heard people at Queen's Park suggest that Doug Ford listens to the last person he talks to. So um, I, I just think it was, uh, you know, good old-fashioned uh, political lobbying. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, does he really care uh, whether we get LRT or BRT? I doubt it. Um, you know, he's committed to the project, and and I guess he's probably in the position that, um, the council may find itself, and you remember uh, back in 2017 when they, one of their biggest fears was being accused of walking away from a billion dollars. Yep. Now they're going to be accused of walking away from 3.4 billion dollars. Um, but uh, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking that Doug Ford may have succumbed to the same thing when the when the Fed said, "Look, we'll we'll put up 1.7 if you'll match it." I think at that point he was thinking. Do I want to walk away from uh, an offer like that? Who knows? I mean, you can't get inside his mind. But the one thing I do know is that none of this has anything to do with transit metrics or what's the best system for the city. Uh, this has really come down to uh, wanting a train. That's really what it has come down to. It, it's, uh, you know, we... Metrolinx, you know, if, if Metrolink, if you could give them truth serum, I think they would, they would paint a, a very interesting picture because, in in their most recent release, I mean, they they put together a proposal for a BRT system that was very detailed, mm -hmm. and uh, it was going to use both Main Street and King Street. I think you and I chatted about this before. Clearly, somebody had done some serious homework on this project, and they had costed out a a B line and an A line that would connect the harbor to the airport and uh, and would go beyond Mac. It would go all the way out to uh, uh, to the University Plaza in Dundas, and and it also it, it would it would go beyond Eastgate. It would it would actually connect to the um, to the uh, Centennial GO station. And you know that's one thing about this project. It still has no connectivity to our GO uh, stations at all, other than. If you want to walk uh, close to a kilometer, you can get off uh, the LRT downtown and walk over to Hunter Street. But, um, you know, in terms of, you know, the kind of things that we thought were important considerations about transit, uh, none of that is there. Uh, none of that has changed. The other element to this is, is I think, something that we can't lose sight of here either. Uh, if the time frame that you've just talked about is, is correct, you know, that's going to be another year and a half, two years, even if they wanted to do this before they, as to use the phrase, put the shovel in the ground, uh, there's going to be a federal election between now and then. Uh, there's going to be a provincial election that year, and there's probably going to be a municipal election before they go too far down to this project as well. So yep. how, how, how detailed is the commitment here? I mean, if there's a change of government at any one of those three levels, uh, this thing could go off the rails again. It's been, see, it's been known to happen. Well, I mean, we, we live with that kind of political uncertainty, and it, you know, I suppose it's a function of 
some of the dithering that's gone on, uh, I, I mean, at this point, I, I really would like to see council uh, finally, uh, you know, take control of uh, to, the, to the extent that they uh, they do have control, and and they certainly do in certain areas. But uh, could could council have moved more decisively, more quickly, earlier in this term, so that we wouldn't be sitting here uh, a year out from a cluster of elections? Uh, Probably, but I, you know, I don't think there's much point looking back. I, I think the thing to do now is get a clear sense of what the costs are, have a clear-eyed view of what this is really going to mean in terms of the taxpayers of Hamilton, what it's going to do for us in terms of a, a transit system that serves the whole city. Um, you know, I was, I was, I saw Andrea was cheering it in the paper today. Mm -hmm. And why not? I mean, it's going to serve three NDP ridings provincially and uh, one federally. And all of a sudden she thinks it's okay for Doug Ford to find another $700 million for this. But $700 million, just to put it in perspective, would give our, our PSWs working those long-term care homes that she cares so much about, give them all a three fifty dollars an hour raise, give them all an extra seven grand a year. So, you know, if we're throwing around $700 million or you know, materializing it out of the sky. Uh, interesting to see that that wouldn't have, you know, maybe that would be the kind of priority that uh, that would make sense instead of this. But anyway, she's happy that we're getting the LRT. There's an interesting twist to it. I know Scott Radley talked to the mayor last night on the Scott Radley show uh, here on CHML. Uh, and, and there's little snippets that I heard, but uh, the, he's, the mayor seemed to indicate it at some point in the conversation uh, that this whole thing might not have to go back to city council. I was kind of sh uh, gobsmacked by that. Uh, and I, by the way, I think city councilors would be if they figured that was to be the case. I mean, they were already ticked off that, that there seemed to be an awful lot of negotiating going on that didn't involve them. Uh, if, in yeah. fact, this is, this is going to go ahead and they say we don't need city council approval. Now, I, I don't know that that's true. Uh, I was pretty sure that the pot that the process dictates that they're going to have to have the final say in this uh but again you know what how are they going to respond to something like that they, they get their nose out of joint pretty easily well uh i'd certainly be wishful thinking on his part that he not have to go past council on this thing i mean really if you look at the project over 12 years so much of it has happened around council uh you know i mean the thing from the beginning, uh, there's always been a fear of actually calling the question. So I'm sure they would like that. Now, the, the question is, and actually I, I sent um, a note to Queen's Park today to the Premier's office uh, just to ask that very question. The Premier has promised many times that Council would have the final say on uh, how transit dollars would get spent, and is he rescinding that? promise now, uh, I mean, as recently as three or four months ago, uh, when he was asked about LRT, he says, we're not going to impose this on anybody. So I guess the question is, with this extra federal money, are, is it now going to be imposed and council has no say? But I think that all the more urgency for council to speak up on this issue, uh, like today, if possible, but, you know, as, as quickly as possible, they need to organize themselves recognizing that they're going to have to do it. And, uh, I mean, the mayor's moving in one direction, and council's going to have to decide what direction they're moving in. Well, and the last time a mayor decided to go it alone uh, was former Mayor Bertina, of course, and it was on this issue, as a matter of fact, to go transit versus LRT, and, and the, the council censored him as a result of that. I don't know what they're going to do with this if, in fact, uh, they get to that point. Uh, more to come on this one, obviously, John. We are just about out of time on this segment, but thanks so much. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be more discussion about this in the days and weeks ahead. Yeah, my pleasure, Bill. Good to talk Take care. to you. You betcha. John Best, of course, the publisher of the Bay Observer. The Bill Kelly Show, weekdays from 9 to noon on 